This segment is brought to you by A.J. Fernandez Cigars, makers of the new world. Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar, which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's journey during his expedition of the new world. This medium to full-bodied cigar shows off the kind of exquisite construction that is expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler that is bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined new world gives off a beautiful billow of smoke that hits you immediately with spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the new world, the flavors become more complex and express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between AJ and his father Ismael, which really makes this cigar stand out in the AJ Fernandez line. To commemorate union of father and son, the cigar is being offered to you at an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. AJ Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year, New World Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. And by Southern Cigar Festival, a world-class cigar event coming to Atlanta, Georgia. On Saturday, June 6th from 2 to 8 p.m., the Verizon Amphitheater at Encore Park will be home to the largest event ever in the state of Georgia surrounding cigars. Guests will receive premium cigars from 35 cigar manufacturers hailing from nine different countries. There will be personal guest appearances from many big-name cigar makers in the industry. In addition, the Southern Cigar Festival will feature prizes, raffles, live music, and plenty of food and drink. Be sure to check out the limited VIP tickets and even more limited VIP box packages. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster and on the event website at southerncigarfestival.com. Get your ticket today. They're going fast. Welcome back, everyone, to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. A couple of quick announcements. New World Connecticut is due to hit stores very soon. I'm very excited to smoke the New World Connecticut. Can't wait to smoke that. And Southern Cigar Festival has added a new $90 value price ticket option. So make sure you go to southerncigarfestival.com to get more information about that. I want to introduce our special guests for this evening Mr. Sean Williams and Eddie Ortega join us on the lines via Skype. Welcome, gentlemen. What's up, buddy? Good to be here. Yes, nice to have you back, Sean. It's nice to have you on the show uh, for the first time. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Will, <coughs> and I'm told we're going to be discussing the Larceny Project. Is that right? That is correct. Um, so, I mean, I mean, a lot of folks know uh, Eddie and Sean, um, well-known uh, in the cigar world. Um, the two of you have come together with an interesting project. It's called Larceny, and we'll kind of get into that. But what kind of brought you two together? How did you two kind of come together and say, we're going to do a, a cigar project together? And I'll let either Eddie or Sean take that one. You guys could pick. I'll let Sean answer that. <laughs> Why me, man? No, I mean, e Eddie and I have been buddies for... Uh... Oh, for a few years now. And we, we just sort of kind of kicked around, like, doing something together. And, um, you know, but how do you do it? Like, what, what makes sense? I mean, you know, neither one of us on factories. You know, he has his brand. I have my brand. Uh, so what would be fun to do? And I, and I sort of came up with the idea of, um, you know, this, 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 this industry, uh, not in a bad way. I mean, it, but, but, but this industry, we have, you know, there's a lot of, um, how should I say, barring of people's ideas and, uh, um, you know, sort of, you know, cherry picking good ideas here and there. So it was just sort of a a, 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 a spoof, so to speak, on on a, a lot of things that goes on in this industry. And it's cool because you know we're all we're all we're all close. I mean, Eddie and I, I guess you say in theory we sort of compete because you know uh, I'm no competition for him, but uh, we sort of compete because we we fight for the she same shelf space. But we're all friends. We all help each other out. Uh, but we wanted to do something you know a little different, and and uh, always like the. Um, the old face-off thing that uh, uh, Camacho and and LaFleur did years ago, and and this is sort of a way to sort of just you know in in in, in just sort of recreate something like that and give us an opportunity to work together. And oh, by the way, you know, do it with you know his his really good friend and and, and longtime business partner Eric Espinosa. So it, it was just something fun to do. <clears throat> so what is the Larceny uh, project? Tell us about the details there. Well, um, it's basically, you know, uh, 
we sort of figure what the other person would like based on you know what we've done before. And I've had you know several cigars that use Ecuadorian wrappers, and and uh, uh, Eddie obviously is famous for using the San Andreas wrapper, uh, in particular with the Serie D. So it's sort of you know we'll have a cigar put together to each other's palate, and and, and that's basically it. I mean it's 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 not you know I guess it sounds more complicated than it is, but it's just it's just again uh, a vehicle for us to do something together. And sort of play off of each other's profiles and palettes, and uh, you know, I think we landed on something good. I mean, Eric did an awesome job with the cigars, so you know, um, you know, the rest is sort of academic at this point. But it was just a a, a way to sort of steal each other's profiles, so to speak, uh, but put them in a box together so that the consumers can have them both, not you know, to pick one over the other, but just to have something different, a different experience, and 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 to have you know, truly, um, you know, two different representations of two different uh, cigar makers' profiles in one package. And, uh, and, and, and that's it in a nutshell. So that's what makes this project stand out from others because, you know, a lot of people are very highly critical of collaborations between cigar manufacturers and been very critical of them in the past. And it really sounds like you took both of your palates and tried to blend that into, into a single cigar. Um, is, is that true? No, well, we did. And that's, that's the thing. Uh, uh, so that's why this collaboration is different. Uh, we, there's two separate cigars. I mean, there's a uh, uh, an EPM Larceny, Larceny and there's an Ortega Larceny. Uh, so, you know, if you look at the box of cigars, there's a, a partition, and on one side there's 10 uh, uh, with the red band on, and then there's 10 with the brown band on. So they're two different cigars. So you get a representation of both of our sort of profiles and palettes in one box, but it's not in the same cigar. There's two totally separate cigars. So, that's so which so, Hi, Paul. Yeah, so what do you think of each other's cigars? So I'm assuming Eddie has smoked Sean's cigar. Sean smoked Eddie's cigar that's oh, in the box. Yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what, is your, what is your take of that? Sean, I'll start with you. What's your take of Eddie's cigar in the box? Oh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. It sucks. It's, really, it's, it's, really, it's really a good cigar. I mean, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's both, both profiles are very savory, but Eddie's in particular, that, that the San Andreas wrapper, I mean, you know, from time to time it can be sort of dry wrapper, but uh, it's actually a very savory cigar. And um, the, just the, the 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 dry aroma. I mean, when you when you just take 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 a whiff, <clears throat> it's very very pronounced with with rich 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 dark chocolate. I mean, it's 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 it, it you know you want to just bite the cigar. I mean, it, it really it's a very very pronounced uh, uh, aroma to it. But then when you smoke it, it's uh it's full body, it's sneaky full body, but it's mm. full body. And um, you know you st- that that that. Dark chocolate comes through. You still get, you know, there's a lot of Nicaraguan tobacco, so you get that nice, rich coffee, and it's a very savory profile. Very good cigar. Very good cigar. And it's, and it's a little, um, you know, it's not as dry as your typical San Andreas, uh, to me at least, you know, for you know, <clears throat> my expert palate for what that's worth. But it's a, it's a really good cigar. So, Eddie, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, but. What do you think of Sean's cigar in the box? It's a, it's a great smoke. Uh, I actually like both cigars a lot. I mean, Eric did a great job with them. Um, it's different profile. I mean, obviously, with the with the one with the Mexican Maduro wrapper, the other one with the Ecuador uh, wrapper, it's just a complete different profile. But both both cigars are actually really really good smokes. Nice full body smokes. Complete different flavor. Um, pretty sure uh, you guys are gonna enjoy them. Yeah, I heard some very good things from the uh, folks at Pipe and Pint in Greensboro, where you're both gonna be at on Saturday. Um, and they have very very uh discriminated palettes so the, the the initial feedback was excellent which was real great yeah. to hear now in terms of the process that you guys took with these two cigars was it did you each work individually with eric and then kind of come back to um the other person and say Here, here's what we came up with or was it the three of you kind of collaborated how did how did that collaboration specifically work it, it was actually more the three of us um you know, and, 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 and honestly, um, you know, I've been making cigars for a while now. Certainly, Eddie's been making cigar, cigars, you know, twice as long as I have. And we both have an idea of what we like. And as long as the material is available, um, you know, it's not as hard to put something together now. So it was more, you know, the three of us sort of talking and bouncing stuff back and forth and just, uh, which is cool. Because, uh, you know, um, Eddie and I, for whatever reason, we've crossed paths a lot. And we've done, you know, uh, events, uh, uh, not necessarily together, but certainly in the same place. And. And so forth, and I haven't had that, that that experience with Eric so much. So this was this is a cool process from that standpoint. Uh, but it was more the three of us, and it, it just it worked a lot better that way. And um, you know, and we think it turned out well. 
you know, when this project was announced, obviously the, the, the you know, this was a big news between the two of you, but it was also big with Eric being involved for the obvious uh, relationship with Eddie. Was it basically when you guys decided you were going to do a project, was it like, let's call Eric and, and see if Eric wants to take this on? Or was it kind of, did you go through a process of different factories with that? No, this is, it's actually, uh, 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 well, Eric and I had, had actually discussed, you know, uh, doing something together later on, but... But this came along, and I was talking to Sean for a while about doing something together, and and you know it just clicked. We go, listen, why don't we just get uh, Eric involved, uh, and and he's making some good stuff over at La Sona Factory and stuff. So you know it's uh, we're good friends, uh, you know, and with Eric he's very uh, flexible, so we can do lots of things. We can go back and forth, you know, and uh, so so it worked out really good. We'll, I'm pretty sure we'll be doing some uh, more stuff in the future with him. Oh, that's great. That's really great to hear. That's really great to hear. I mean, because it's a, it's a great trifecta that, that's involved with this project. Now, the cigar was released in one size. Yeah. One size. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a was it a, a well, Toro? Well, this is you know basically what when, when we did this project and we were both talking about doing a you know this was a very small project. Uh, it was only four hundred boxes. Uh, we basically sold the four hundred probably in a, in a couple of days. It didn't take us long to to get it sold. But we were hex hesitating in terms of doing either more boxes or, you know, the market, the current market right now is just so screwed up with so many brands being uh, launched every week from, from every which way. Um, you know, so, so it, it, you just got to be careful when, 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 when launching anything new. Uh, you don't want to overextend the number of boxes you're going to put out there. You want to make sure you get them out there, the retailer, the retailer moves the boxes, moves the inventory, and he's all happy. Everybody's happy because, you know, a cigar went well. The consumers liked it. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we, we want to be, in terms of doing any limited stuff, we, we want to be picky on what we do. We want to see the limit of, limit the, the number of boxes we make. We just want everything to go very smooth uh, for both, for, for us and the retailers. So, um, so this was a very small, a small uh, number of boxes. It was, so it wasn't that that you know that that much of a big deal in, in getting everything together. So what what size? Did it, it's obviously not a sixty ring then. If you were limited on tobacco, no, or... it's a fifty six and a half by fifty two. Gotcha. And so now, is this collaboration? Uh, are you, do you see you guys coming together again to do another collaboration and do yeah, and do another we're, cigar? We're launching, we're launching a, a the next limited reserve is going to be uh, white, black, and brown. Which is me, uh, Sean, and Eric. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be like a like a Kit Kat bar. Yeah, like a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> I I'm mean, there's so many, you know, all you gotta do in, in the mornings. I mean, is is go and check up. Uh, like I'm very in the mornings. The first thing I do is make my round, checking up on all the new stuff that's out there, and it's just such a, an enormous amount of stuff that comes out on a, on a regular week that. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta think about, you know, what you want to do in terms of limited releases. I mean, it's just saturated out there. And we we we've talked about it, and and obviously we like to do more. But you know, you know, it's one thing for us to want to do something more. It's another thing for consumers to want it to be done. So you know, we'll see you know how larceny goes. I mean, you know, like 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 uh, Eddie said, we sold out within a couple of days just from the press release. So that's great. But now the cigars are actually hitting the shelves. So far, the response has been good. So we'll see. And um, if uh, if the cigars are, are are you know nearly as good as we think they are, then there'll be a demand for them, and and we'll you know pick some spots to to you know do some additional things, maybe with the Larceny uh, 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 brand or or uh, maybe another size or something. But you know it, the, the the good thing about it, um, you know, being small, and uh, and working with uh, with Eric, who's a smaller factory, and Nimble. You know, it's uh, you know, we could we could, you know, adjust and do things on a dime, and um, you know, and just have fun with it. So we'll we'll let the consumers sort of drive, you know, uh, what the next release should be. Uh, but you know, you know, I'm I'm game to work with Eddie anytime. I mean, that, that's you know, he's 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 a, he's a really good guy. I've known him a long time, and and uh, it's uh, it's it's a pleasure to be working with him. So if we have a chance to do this again, I mean, I, I'm game. So, but we'll see. We'll see what the consumers say. So, Sean, I, I wanted to ask you if uh, someone 
like myself, sadly, has not smoked an El Premier Mundo cigar. I've heard uh, really uh, good uh, wait, wait, things where, about where, them. Where do you live? Uh, I li- the studio's here in Rhode Island, and I live, I live about 10 minutes from the studio, so we're in Rhode Island. Oh, you're in Rhode Island? Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, okay. I didn't even know you smoked cigars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you should go see um, my man in Warwick, Rhode Island. Uh, is Havana... It's the club. Jeez. Havana, uh, Cigar, Havana Cigar Club? Yes. Right. That's right next door. That's right next door. <laughs> Yeah, How yeah. Of, as a matter of fact, that looks like the paneling. So you should go next door to that humidor and grab some of my cigars. I stole the paneling, actually, from next door and put it behind me. That See, actually I've is the there. Si- I know that paneling. That's the same I, paneling. I this is the paneling as well. So this is the leftover paneling, and we made a wall out of it in the studio. Sean, I will make sure that he gets those cigars. So, <laughs> so which cigars are next door? Tell me, help, me, help me find them. I, I thought I've no. tried everything in their humidor next door. Apparently, no, I failed, and I feel really I'm, bad. I'm, memory and i'm just trying to remember like the last stuff that was shipped to him which is kind of hard to do but i would think he has epifania and la hermandad at, at, at a minimum obviously he doesn't have larceny uh, okay epifania and la hermandad i believe he has or he had so okay i'm gonna go look for those tomorrow yeah First and if not morning. paul you'll have some because i'll be up at a store on saturday with these okay. guys so Good. You'll, you'll definitely have them for smokes of the week so right right now, as we speak, you're not smoking a Series D or if you remember. I, I am. What are you smoking, Paul? Um, I am smoking our next guest cigar because that's just what I pulled from the humidor. Uh, so, sorry. What is, I, what, is what is it? What is it, man? Uh, this is the, uh, the Wilson and Adams. This is a Lancero size cigar. It, it's, oh. actually, it's actually very good. Um, I did buy a box of the Series D Ortega natural it was a box pressed it was kind of like it looks like a corona sized box press is that the number four the number seven number se- and we, number seven yep yeah i bought nice. a bo- i bought a box of those love that cigar it's fantastic yeah Thanks, this bud. is i haven't smoked this one in a, it probably this is the first one i've had in 2015 at the natural eddie it's smoking really good it's got this nice little graham cracker sweetness to it um it's really smoking great now nice coop you're not there with with paul right I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, Coop's, Coop's yeah. in North Carolina, and our studio is, is in Warwick, Rhode Island. We, we rent the space right next door, conveniently, to the Havana Cigar Club. Coop, you we sound are. a little like, uh, like Bruce Jenner, man. Oh, <laughs> oh Eddie! <laughs> you know, if you, oh. put a, if you put a wig on Will, he might actually look like Bruce Jenner. <laughs> if I show up on a box of... I don't want to say <laughs> Not Wheaties. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh, Eddie, going for the. I'm just kidding, bro. You, you sound good. So, so, so I mean, I thought you were gonna make fat jokes at me, Eddie. I mean, uh, Eddie sees me in Eddie sees me in Florida. He goes, "Coop, man, you put on a couple." I'm like, "I know." <laughs> so, Eddie, um, and I'm gonna ask this of both of you: what What's coming out next for uh, Ortega? Uh, tell you the truth, I have nothing in the pipeline right now. Uh, just want to stick it one, one step at a time. We did the larceny, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm, I'm hooking up with Sean over the weekend now to go to uh, up to Pipe and Pine for their event and stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll talk over some stuff and see, uh, see what's next that we can put together. Sean, what about for you? Uh, I, have, I, have, I have something in the works, uh, possibly for the summer. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to possibly doing something, uh, another larceny release as well um but you know a big thing for me is is is, is trying to trying to you know get uh, my 10-year cigar out uh, at the end of this year so um so that that's sort of the you know the biggest thing i'm working on mm-hmm. but I, yeah I'm, I'm always tinkering with something it's just a matter of you know if it can come out or when it makes sense or whatever yeah, what it's short Go ahead, Eddie. Uh, go ahead, Eddie. So, Paul. what do you, what are you thinking for your ten year cigar? Is that like a limited release? Do you do want to do a Lancero or a special size or like what? You know, what what? I, I I I don't know. I, I sort of um, I know what I want it to be as far as the basic components, and I, and I won't say what that is. But the size, I don't know. It's going to depend on what what, what size it smokes best in. Uh, yeah, and it'll be limited release. I mean, I, I'll be hard pressed honestly to do much stuff going forward that's not going to be limited release because i have core stuff that, that that that's out there and, and and it moves um you can't do you can't do core stuff anymore it doesn't oh. sell you gotta do limited <laughs> all limited limited extremely rare manufacturer like no other uh, out there 
it doesn't sell. Uh, unless it's limited, it's not going to be around for uh, for uh, another three or four months. It, it just uh, that's that's what that's what I guess that's what consumers, what the retailers want. You know. Uh, yeah, but Eddie, you know what I find uh, with a lot of people, myself included, is that sometimes we'll go after that limited cigar and it'll get hot and then it'll kind of fade off. But the staples are the ones that are regular production, that always smoke great, the ones that consumers know that they can go back to time and time again, and it's going to be a consistent smoke, and it's going to be a, a great smoke, and that, it's going to age well that, in your humidor. That's the that magic used, formula for me. That used to be the case. That used to be the case. You smoke once. The, the rule was every uh, for the longest time, it was you build your brands, your core lines, and once a year, maybe at the IPCPR show, you will launch a, an extra size or bring out something new. What that used to be the rule. Now it's like every three months you, you're coming up with different stuff. So I, I I know what you're saying. The the problem is that you don't get you don't get the chance to get back to the core lines mm. because you there's so much stuff coming out all the time that you keep going from new to new to the to the newest thing to the newest thing and you end up not going back and forth. Uh, back to the to the regular core core lines. I mean, it no 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 brand no brand now. A anything that's over a year old begins to fade like really fast, and you're forced to come up with something uh, some other stuff. Even if you're taking the same uh, product and putting a different band on it and rewrapping it and renaming it, uh, it'll just be something new. Um, and it's very unfortunate. It it's is. very unfortunate. I mean, you're just not building long-term uh you know brands everything is just everything just fades away really fast well uh, and you know it's it's a good point because as much as i like my regular brands um i'm smoking all the newer stuff and only going back to my regular brands every once in a while so i'm not buying as many boxes of those because they're sitting in my course. humidor longer of course that's and it's not just the cigar industry that's that's the, 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 the generation we live in. Mm. Uh, everything, it's, uh, you know, you got Apple coming out with a new uh, cell every three months. You got Samsung coming out with one every other month. Do you really need an Apple I, uh, iPhone 6 when the 5S is just as good? I mean, what, the, the minor stuff you get. So the consumer nowadays is just so used to, uh, you know, bouncing from new product to new product that it just roll. It, it, it's a natural rollover into just about anything they buy from not having any any brand uh, loyalty to 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 wanting all the the latest tech out there uh, you know the new the newest product out there the hottest what everybody else wants i mean it's just uh, it's crazy it's crazy the way uh, the market is right now yeah and i think you're right Eddie that goes across all uh, products as yeah, well yeah it's not it's not just our industry. If you think about it, all the old brands, all the old established brands, Partagas, Macanudos, A. Shopman's, Hoyo, Rothschilds, all those brands that were around for a long time, when I came into this industry, I mean, that's, those are the brands that were out there in every store. And they have all uh, faded away, you know, some, somewhat pretty much at the, at the tobacconist level. Uh, and it's very unfortunate because the same thing is happening to the brands that we we manufacture right now. You know, you take the Series D, the first year, the first year and a half, he was blowing it out of the water. And then now it's a lot slower and now everybody's always saying, you know, like, what's new, what's new? Uh, and it just forces you to to come up with, with you know, reinvent new products on, on a regular basis. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a crazy market, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah. So Sean, do you like, see the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, my, my experience is a little different than, than Eddie's. He, he's been around a, a lot longer than I have. So, you know, um, you know, I just started gaining traction in this thing, you know, last few years. Uh, so so um, really with the advent and, and the growth of social media. So I think that sort of feeds into it as well. Um, and the barriers of entry to bringing a new cigar to the market are, are, are a lot different than they were just from a few years ago when I started. I mean, this is a complete I, I, I'm. I, I, I got into the industry like 20 years ago. Yeah. It's a completely different industry than the one I entered when I when I came in. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about a, a, a huge, huge uh, you know turn turnaround in the industry. Um, 
You know, we all talk about the limited releases and everything, because everything nowadays is a press release, either the bloggers get it or whatever, but if you read a little bit into the press releases, and so-and-so is making a limited reserve, well, you know, he made 50 boxes for a store. That's a limited uh, release. Uh, and it's just about turning over the press release and who can put out the, you know, the, the information uh, faster, uh, but it creates havoc, havoc with the consumer because the consumer is just so used to, 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 to all the influx of all the, inform all the information of all mm -hmm. the new things that are coming out that it just, uh, it just makes everything, you know, tough, tough out there in the market. It's not just for us. It's for the retailers. You know, the retailers can only carry X amount of cigars. Mm -hmm. The stuff they carry has to move. And every, every time somebody comes in and asks for the, new, the newest cigar, the newest limited release, you know, obviously the retailer can't stock everything that, 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 you know, it's out there in the blogs or the new press releases. It's just an impossibility. So it's, uh, if you talk to the retailers, they'll tell you the same thing. It's just something's got to give, put it that way. So you now know, you know, both will be at the Southern Cigar Festival. Is that true? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. So I, I, go ahead. Yeah, I got, a, I got, a, I got oh. just a uh, question for Eddie and Sean. So, Sean, pick one cigar from Eddie's portfolio that you would absolutely, you know, reach and keep in your humidor. Cubao. Cubao. That's to me. That's that's. Uh, um, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, I've enjoyed it. You know, most of what Eddie's made. You know, certainly going back to, uh, you know, to the days of, of EO Brands when he and he and Eric were, were, were a team. But and, and I tell him, I'm not saying anything that he doesn't know. I talk to him all the time, and I tell him, you know, Cubao is just. It's just a just a a, a, a good all around cigar. Or certainly on, on on the milder side, but it's so flavorful, creamy, good complexity. I just I absolutely love that cigar. And when that cigar, let me tell you, when that cigar ages, um, you know, a little story. Uh, Pete from Pipe and Pint gave me one of the old Espinosa your Ortega ones, and it had like the the amber colored cellophane on it. <laughs> and mm. I know I smoked it on a Stogie Geek show. It was just exactly how you described it, Sean. I agree. Oh, uh, Eddie, how about you from Sean's portfolio? Uh-oh. Uh, I would lie. I know I've, I've actually smoked uh, a lot of Sean's stuff. Uh, the only thing I won't be able to, because I know I go with Primer Mundo, so I remember always the Primer Mundo. I just don't remember, like, specific Vitolas. But I've smoked uh, uh, everything, I mean, a lot of his stuff from the stuff that Abe makes. Uh, and uh, the ones I really used to like is the ones that... Uh, that were made uh, initially at the Titan de Bronze, the Bronze by Willie, wow. right? Right, Sean, right? Yeah, yeah. League yeah. of Miami and uh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the League of Miami was a great smoke. Uh, but the stuff that Abe makes, uh, it's it, it, man, I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kid you. I mean, just about every cigar that's out there right now, aside, I mean, I'm I've never been one of these guys that goes into how much better my cigar is than somebody else's cigar. I mean. There's so many good cigars out there that I can't even remember the last time. And I smoke a lot of different cigars. If you go into my Instagram account or, you, or my Facebook, I mean, I smoke everybody's cigars. Uh, and I actually have enjoyed a lot of cigars that are not, you know, made by me or for me. Um, yeah. So it, it, there is, I mean, there's so many great cigars out there that, uh, you know, it, it's hard to choose. It's, it's, it's just hard to choose right now. I mean... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very specific to what I smoke. I, I, I mean, I smoke about 10 boxes uh, of, uh, of the Cubaos a month and maybe like about five or six of the Series D Maduro. I'm very specific to those two profiles. But, you know, uh, maybe if I was a consumer, I'd be constantly trying different, different new uh, cigars to see if, uh, you know, if I could just keep on improving on the profile. But uh, there's just a lot of great cigars out there. It's it's a great time to be a cigar smoker. It really is. There's some good stuff on the market. There really is. Yep. I'm going to give you guys a wish list cigar I want each of you to bring back. Sean, I want you to bring back Class A Reserva. And Eddie, I want you to bring back Cubao Maduro. Mm -hmm. that Cubao That's Maduro. my wish. Yeah. I miss that cigar. Yeah, I miss both those cigars. So I'm thinking I'm thinking Coop's a Maduro guy. I, I, I go across the board, but I happen to like both of your Maduros. Um so I mean, you you, you both, uh, but I do like Maduro. And Casa Reserva was, I mean, I have one left. It's sitting in my humidor. Oh, That's wow. a special. Yeah. See, you need to bring him back and just give him a different name, and then you got something new. Yeah, <laughs> now there you, you go. Got, now you have, you have to the 
That's we'll, it. We'll get, Coop, we'll get Coop to give it a 92 in his ratings. There you go. <laughs> what? 92? 95? Well, man. As long, as, if, if you guys give me... Hey, go. You give me that exclusive. I'm just kidding. Nah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, Sean think, and, uh, and Eddie, thank you so much for appearing on the show. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Um, we look forward to, uh, to smoking your, your new project, um, the Larceny. Uh, very excited to smoke that. Can't wait to try it. And uh, I wish you both the best of luck. And I'll see, you both, on, I'll see you both on Saturday. Thanks, well, Paul. Well, yes, well, thank you for having us, buddy. Yep. Thanks, Sean. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Appreciate Eddie. it, guys. All right. Have a good night. Kids. Take care. Okay. With that, we're going to take a short break and come back and bring in our next guest. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 